Hi, Yogi, it's Bri. Welcome to the 60-minute full body flexibility flow. We'll get warm and really work on our flexibility together. I have two blocks here, so please grab two blocks for the practice. And let's get started. Let's get started in child's pose. Have your knees wide, big toes touching, forehead on the mat, and take your arms back for now. Allow the skin on your forehead to just gently crease towards your nose, and use this brief but very important time in the practice to really settle in. We'll take a couple of clearing breaths together so that our mind is really on the mat. Take a deep inhalation. Open your mouth, let it go. Feel all of that tension just melt away from the neck and the shoulders. And again, inhale, a little fuller this time. Open your mouth, let it go. Maybe allowing the hips to drop back onto the heels a bit heavier. One more breath, inhale fully, feeling the side ribs expand, the back ribs expand even. And open your mouth, let it go. Stretch your arms forward. Feel the fingertips grip the mat. Find your ujjayi breath, just breathing in and out through your nose with that slight restriction of the muscles at the back of your throat. Feeling energy in your arms as the forearms lift, but keep your forehead down. One more cycle of ujjayi breath, just getting your inhalations and your exhalations to be equal. And then inhale, rise up into tabletop position. Knees underneath your hips, hands underneath your shoulders. Spread your fingers and grip the mat with your fingertips. Feel your shoulders right over your wrists and draw your navel in towards your spine. From here, we're just gonna draw circles with our shoulders. First, clockwise. As you go to the left, try to push down through the right hand. As you go to the right, try to push down through the left. Finding a bit of blood flow in the arms, the forearms, and just finding some mobility in the wrists. You'll be using them quite a lot. Now counterclockwise, making those circles. If your wrists allow, you can go a little further past the fingertips with the shoulders, maybe even back, hips to heels. A couple more rounds. I'm so excited to be working on flexibility with you in this class because anytime I practice flexibility in my body, my mind gets a little bit more flexible too. Okay, now come back to stillness right at center and tabletop. We're going to turn our hands over so that the fingertips face the midline of the mat and the palms are what you're looking at. Spread your fingers wide, put a little bend in your elbows and make a fist with your hands. Do your best to keep that fist. So really pull the fingernails in towards the palm or the base of the palm and then begin to push through the back of your palm. My wrists or forearms are pretty tight, so it's really hard for me to get to straight, especially the first time I try this in a practice. But it's really not the most important thing. What's important is that you're finding that balance in the extension of your wrist, because we're typically flexing our wrists all the time in yoga. As you inhale, push down a little bit more. And exhale, release, bringing your hands back into that tabletop position. Gripping firmly with your fingertips. Inhale, drop the chest down. Pull the shoulder tips back. Let the sit bones rise, or sits bones, and look forward. Finding a nice front body opener, back body engager. Then exhale, push down through the hands and round. Spread your shoulder blades. Draw the tailbone down and the navel in. A little more fluid now, two more rounds. Inhale, finding your cow position, really pulling the chest through the gateway of the arms. Exhale, round. One more time. Inhale, back bend. And then exhale, round. Inhale to a neutral spine. 
Walk your knees back just a tad, shift the shoulders past the wrist, and exhale, start to bend your elbows down into a supported chaturanga, bringing your chest all the way down and keeping your butt lifted. Put your chin down onto the ground, knees, chest, chin. If this is not enough of a stretch for you, you can walk your knees in in a second. But first, think about pulling your hands back towards your feet so your shoulder tips lift. Draw the navel just slightly in, and then you can walk your knees in, lifting your butt up a little bit more. This is a great way to open the front of your shoulders, but also to engage the muscles in your back that you need for these back bends. Inhale. And exhale, walk your knees back out of that uncomfortable position and lie all the way down onto your belly. Lift your chest up and bring your forearms down onto the mat. Sphinx pose. I love beginning my practice with Sphinx because it's a great way to open the shoulders, but at the same time, finding strength in the right places. So take your elbows slightly forward of your shoulders, turn your hands out slightly as well, finding that external rotation of the upper arm bone. From here, point your toes and push down firmly through the tops of your feet so the inner thighs roll up towards the ceiling. Then inhale, pull the hands back towards the feet. Try to keep your pelvis in the same place. Just think about elongating the spine away from the pelvis so that your heart shines through your shoulders. Draw the shoulder blades down as you push down through the elbows. Imagine the crown of the head getting a little bit closer to the ceiling. Inhale, pull yourself in just a little bit more. And as you exhale, draw the navel in. Try to keep yourself lifted. Bring the elbows out, keep the torso up, and move the hands back so that the hands are right underneath your elbows. Inhale, lift up cobra position. Exhale, navel in. Inhale, push down through your feet, lift all the way up into up dog. Inner thighs lift to the ceiling, shoulders pull back, lift the heart up high. Exhale, downward facing dog. Mm, it's amazing what a few back bends can do in the beginning of a practice. I feel longer already. Looking forward at your hands, making sure that they're parallel to one another and at least shoulders distance. I like my index fingers forward. It helps to open my shoulders a little more, but you can also go traditional with the uh, middle fingers forward. Drop your head down, but keep some weight in the fingertips. From the forearms in, spread the shoulder blades wide. Inhale, come high up onto your toes. Bend your right knee and straighten your left leg, bringing your left heel down. I can feel my calf stretching on the left side. That feels so good. It's okay if your left heel doesn't actually touch the ground, but just thinking about rooting it heavily towards the mat. Inhale to the tips of your toes, switch sides, bend your left knee, press your right heel down. Finding that line from your right sit bone all the way down through the right heel. Inhale high up to the balls of your feet, press back through the inner thighs and the outer hips to find that needed length in the torso, and exhale, root both heels heavy towards the earth. If you find you're a little more rounded in the low back, a little bend in the knees will help you. Breathing here. That first down dog always feels so good in the body. It really balances out everything we do all day, all that sitting, maybe running, or anything that you do in your body. Now let's take three fluid vinyasas together. Inhale, shift forward into plank. Exhale, knees down if needed, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Really focus on the length of the torso. Lift the heart. Exhale, downward facing dog. And again, inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Think about your pelvis staying where it is. Elongate the spine away from the pelvis. Lift the heart. Downward facing dog, exhale. One more time, nothing like vinyasas to warm up the body. Inhale, plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Push through the hands, lift the heart, draw the navel in. Exhale, child's pose. Putting the knees down, keeping the knees wide. Dropping your forehead down onto the mat.
and just letting your arms rest for a moment. Although we're working on our flexibility in this class and in this plan, we'll also still get a nice balanced workout, right? Because yoga has both strength and flexibility within the practice. Deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. Arms forward as you inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bring your feet together. Strong, straight arms as you look forward. Inhale, rise to your toes. Bend your knees and just take a couple steps or one big step with each foot forward to the front of the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Take your feet hips distance or a little wider if you need some more space. Put a little bend in your knees and exhale, fold and grab a hold of opposite elbows. So with that little bend in the knees, you can really feel the muscles around the spine beginning to elongate, releasing some of that tension. Now let's work into the legs. Begin to lift your quadriceps up. And instead of thinking about straightening the legs from the knees, straighten the legs by lifting the sits bones up towards the sky and crown of the head down towards the mat. As you inhale, push your feet, the outer edges of your feet, out toward the outer edges of the mat. That'll give you a little more space around the pelvis. Shifting a bit of weight slightly forward into the balls of the feet will also work on lengthening even deeper into the back of your body, especially the legs. And then inhale to a flat back. Put a little bend in your knees. Exhale, hands to your hips. And inhale, rise all the way up to standing. Heel toe, your feet to touch. Big toes touching, a little space between your heels. And now we'll take Surya Namaskar A. Three, four times, just depending on how I feel <laughs> in the practice. And we'll really focus on the forward fold part of our Surya Namaskar A. Take your hands by your side. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. As the palms touch, lift the heart. Exhale, folding all the way down. Grabbing a hold of your ankles as you fold, pull the crown of the head down towards the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step back into plank pose. Inhale, shift forward to the tips of the toes. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Peel the heart forward, the inner thighs up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. There are so many elements um, of, of engagement, of actions in your downward facing dog that help you find flexibility. So although we're not pushing our chest back or down, think about elongating the sides of the waist by pressing the hips up. Keeping the heels heavy towards the mat will help you find length in the back of your legs. Bring your feet together. Inhale, look forward. Come high up to your toes. Bend your knees. You can continue stepping forward or take a hop to the front of the mat. Flat back, inhale. Exhale, grab your ankles and fold, but pull the crown of the head down. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing. Gaze up as the palms touch. Lift your heart. Exhale, hands to your heart. Let's keep moving. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, folding down. This time, grabbing your calves, pulling the calves up as the crown of the head pulls down. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, step or jump back through your vinyasa. Really focusing on opening and expanding in your up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Using your down dog as that pit stop, that resting point. But if at any time in the practice you need to rest, you can come down into child's pose. Breathing here. Each inhalation really helps you find that needed length in your body. Allow each, each exhalation to really seal in that length.
Bring your feet together. Look forward as you inhale, rise to the toes. Bend the knees, exhale, step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back, inhale. As you exhale, fold, but grab your calves, pull them up, squeeze the elbows in, and try to sandwich your ribs on your thighs. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing. Lift your heart. Exhale, hands to your heart. Two more rounds. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, forward fold. This time, grab your big toes with your peace sign fingers. Inhale, flat back, straighten the arms. And then exhale, fold, bend the elbows, pull the crown of the head towards the tips of your toes. Inhale, flat back, plant the palms, step or hop it back through your vinyasa. Remembering to find that nice, deep, engaged up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Halfway there. Breathing here. In and out through the nose. Strong arm, strong core. Long back body. Bringing your feet together. Look forward as you inhale to your toes. Bend your knees, step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back, inhale. As you exhale, grab your big toes with your peace sign fingers. Pull up on the big toes, take the elbows out wide and reach the crown of the head down. Inhale, rising all the way up towards standing. Exhale, hands to your heart. Let's keep moving. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold it down. This time, take your feet to hips distance and your hands underneath your feet. Padahastasana, flat back, inhale. Exhale, fold. Now, traditionally, the elbows go out wide. Once you fold, hug the elbows into the midline, reaching the elbows and the forearms towards the shin bone and fold down. Inhale to a flat back. Remove your hands from underneath your feet. Bring your feet together and either step or hop it back. Vinyasa. Inhale, upward facing dog. Peel the shoulders open. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing. A few breath cycles. Once again, allowing your inhalations to really lengthen the body. With each exhalation, drawing the ribs and the navel in. Last time, bring your feet together. Firm the thighs together as you look forward. Inhale to your toes, bend your knees, and exhale, step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back, inhale. As you exhale, take your feet to hips distance, hands underneath your feet, and fold in for Padahastasana. Hug the elbows in. Really thinking about pulling the crown of the head down to the mat, I want you to bend your right knee and really begin to lift your left heel up. So instead of bending the left knee, just think about lifting the left sit bone. So you're pushing the ball of your left foot down into the heel of your left hand. Putting your left heel down, bending your left knee, and just doing the same thing with the right leg. So lifting the right heel up and reaching up with the right sit bone. Your left leg might straighten. Inhale. Exhale, both heels down and fold. And then inhale, removing the hands from the feet, rising all the way up towards standing. Exhale, bringing your hands to your heart. Closing your eyes. Taking a few moments here just to observe your breathing. Observe your body. Hopefully you're feeling longer, a little more flexible, and possibly a bit warmer. Open your eyes, bring your big toes to touch once again, and inhale, reach your arms out to come up. This time as you exhale, turn your hands out, sweep your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, press the palms together and keep a little bend in the elbows as you reach the knuckles down. Think about hugging the shoulder blades together and pressing the inner tips of your shoulder blades towards your heart. Inhale, exhale, folding in. 
Now, if you're a bit tighter in the back body and having your feet together doesn't give you enough space to fold, you can take your feet to hips distance and a little bend in your knees. Relax the crown of the head towards the mat and reach the knuckles overhead for a deep stretch in the front of your shoulders. Inhale and exhale, release the hands down towards the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, step your left foot back. Place your left knee down onto the mat. Keeping your left toes tucked under, bring your hands to your right knee. With your hands on your right knee, push the right heel down and then press your torso back over your hips. It's a really great way to open the front of your left thigh. You might even feel the stretch all the way up into the hip flexors. If you're a bit more flexible, keep thinking about pulling the right foot to the back of the mat. If you need a little more stretch, you can lower the hips down a bit more towards the mat. Draw the navel in. Inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, lift the navel, elongate the sides of the waist, and move the heart up towards the sky, just like you've been practicing in up dog. Inhale. Exhale, take your left hand down underneath your left shoulder, reach your right arm up for a simple twist. Thinking about hugging the inner thighs together as you revolve your right shoulder open. Now inhale, stretch the right arm back towards the back of the mat and lift your left foot up. If you can't quite reach it, sometimes if you put your right hand on your right knee and look back to see where it is, just kind of press yourself into a twist, you might be able to grab that right foot. First, you're going to push the right foot, or the left foot that is, into the right hand to open your right shoulder. Then you can begin to find a bit more flexibility in the front of your left leg by pulling your left heel in towards your left glute. This is usually one of the tighter parts of our bodies, especially if we're a bit more athletic. We do a lot of lifting or running or any sort of sports. The quads and the hip flexors get sort of tight. A couple breaths here. Each inhalation, keep revolving the right shoulder open. Each exhalation, pulling the left heel in. Inhale. And exhale, release both hands down. Straighten your right leg, come onto your right heel for Ardha Hanumanasana. Flex your right foot, spread the toes. Firm the inner thighs into one another. You can untuck the left toes. Inhale, lengthen the spine and exhale, fold down through center. Inhale to a flat back, straight arms will make this more of a moving fold. Exhale, fold the forehead or your forehead to the right shin. You can feel a different stretch just based on where you fold your torso. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold down through center. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold your forehead to your right shin. And inhale back to center, flat back, straight arms. You're going to walk back with your hips and your hands. Take your left foot to the outside of the left hip and just sit all the way down to the inside of your left foot. Once again, right foot is flexed. Inhale, reach your arms up. And exhale, fold. Now, this is really uncomfortable for the top of your left foot. We're actually working not only on the flexibility of our right hamstring, but also on the flexibility of the top of the left foot. You can also elevate yourself, maybe block underneath your butt or a bolster, maybe even a blanket. Grabbing your right ankle or right heel with both of your hands, inhale, lengthen the crown of the head towards the tips of your right toes. And as you exhale, fold your forehead down. You can experiment with folding down to the middle, maybe getting a stretch into the belly of your right hamstring. I even feel a stretch in the outside of the right hip here. You can fold down to your right shin, maybe even grabbing the outside of your right foot with your left hand and folding down to the outside of your right leg. All different stretches. Now inhale, rising up, reach your right arm up towards the sky, really lengthen through the right side body. Now reach your right hand back behind you so the fingertips face the back of the mat and our, your hand is in line with your right glute. You're going to turn your right foot to the right side of the mat, push down through your left foot and inhale, lift your hips up, 
really pushing down through the top of your left foot, a little flip dog here, strengthening the right arm, opening the chest and the front of your left leg. Exhale, lower the hips. I'm going to do that two more times. Inhale, lift the hips up. Exhale, lower. One more. Inhale, hips lift. And exhale, lower. Facing the front of your mat once again. Inhale, reach your arms up. Right foot flexed. Exhale, hands down. You're going to stand all the way up into a standing split on your right leg. Fingertips underneath your shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. Bend your left knee. Put a little bend in your right knee as well. Now, with your left fingertips underneath your left shoulder, grab your right ankle with your right hand and try to rest your ribs on your right thigh as you pull your forehead in. You can begin to straighten your right leg first. Reach your left knee up towards the sky. Then maybe straighten your left leg. You can experiment with flexing the left foot, spreading the toes or pointing, whatever feels like gives you the most length in the front of your left leg. Now bend your left knee once again, bend your right knee, straighten the right leg, pull your forehead in, reach the left knee up high and then straighten your left leg. You might feel a bit more length. One more time, bend the left and the right knee, Lengthen the torso, pull your forehead in towards the right shin, then straighten your right leg, reach the left knee up high, and then reach the left toes up high as you straighten the left leg. Inhale to a flat back. I'm feeling extra long. Step back through your vinyasa. Your right and left sides, I'm sure, feel really, really different because mine do too. Downward facing dog. Deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. Bring your feet together. Look forward as you inhale to your toes. Bend your knees. Exhale, step or hop to the front of the mat. Flat back, inhale. Exhale, folding in. Inhale, rising all the way up to standing. Gaze up as the palms touch. Turn your hands out as you exhale. Sweep your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Inhale, lift your heart up high. And exhale, folding in. Once again, if it's too much for you with the legs together, feet hips distance, or even a little wider than the hips could feel really, really good. With that little bend in the elbows, reach the knuckles overhead. Sweep the hands down towards the mat. Inhale to a flat back. Step your right foot back. Place your right knee down, keeping the right toes tucked under. Take your hands to your left knee and press the left heel down as you push the torso back over your hips. If you need a little more sensation, you can bend deeper into your left knee, pull your left foot to the back of the mat and lift your navel. Then inhale, reaching the arms up for full Anjaneyasana, lifting your chest up high. Exhale, right hand down, left arm up, finding that simple twist. Keep hugging the inner thighs into one another, drawing your right shoulder blade down. Open the left shoulder just a little bit more. Then inhale, reach your left hand back, lift your right foot up, and if you can't quite grab that right foot, you can push your left hand down onto the left knee to twist a bit more, so maybe you can see where it is, and then grab the foot. I like to grab the foot from the outside or the pinky toe edge, pushing my foot back into my hand to open the left shoulder, and then pulling that right heel in. You'll always feel a little different on both sides. For me, my right side is a bit more flexible. My left side, a bit stronger than the right, which tends to go hand in hand. Keep twisting open as you open that right quad, right hip flexor. And then inhale, reach that left arm back up. Exhale, left hand down. Come onto that right knee as you untuck your toes and straighten your left leg as you come onto your left heel, Ardha Hanumanasana. Fingertips underneath your shoulders. Inhale to a flat back. Exhale, fold down through center. That first fold, you always feel that tension grip. Inhale to a flat back again. 
Bend the elbows as you exhale, fold your forehead towards the left shin. And again, inhale, flat back. Lengthen the spine as you exhale, fold down through center. Hopefully the folding getting a little bit easier as the hamstring opens. Inhale to your flat back. Last time, exhale, fold down over your left shin. Inhale, flat back. Walk the hands back until your tush sits down to the inside of your right foot. If there's any knee pain here, just bifurcating the calf or splitting it in half before you bend back, or sitting elevating your hips up onto a blanket or a bolster or even blocks. Flex your left foot as you inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, folding down. Now, it's perfectly fine if you're folding and you're a little more rounded here. You can put a little bend in your left knee and really focus on lengthening the spine. That's that first step. Firm the inner thighs into one another. Grab what you can. Maybe it's even your ankle, your calf, or your left heel, and fold down. As I fold, I like to think about pulling my left thigh bone back into the hip. And again, just like you did on the other side, experiment with folding down through center. You can actually get a deeper fold if you fold down through center because there's no leg there. You can fold down to the outside of your left leg. Or just down onto your left shin. One more breath. And then inhale, rising up. Reaching your left arm all the way back behind you. So not too far, right? You want it at least, you know, a little less than a ruler's distance behind your left glute. Fingertips face the back of the mat. You're going to turn to the pinky toe edge of your left foot. Stay on the top of your right foot. You're going to push down through your right foot and your left hand, the pinky toe edge of the left foot, and lift the heart up high. Reach your right arm up and over. Inhale. Exhale, lowering your hips. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Last one. Inhale, lift. Really push down. Lift your hips up high. And exhale, lowering your hips down. Gazing forward once again, squaring your torso and hips to the front of the mat. Crawl forward until you're all the way up on your left foot, lifting your right leg up, standing splits. Inhale to a flat back. So the depth of a standing splits, I always get this question, you know, how do you deepen your standing splits, especially for um, taking pictures, because it's one of those things you have to jump right into. And this is one of the ways that I do it, right? Little bend in both of your knees, well, big bend in the right leg. Grab your left ankle and really pull the torso, lengthen it over your left thigh. Then grabbing your left ankle with your left hand, pull your forehead in, straighten the left leg first. Then reach up through your right knee, and you can then reach way up high with your right toes as you straighten the leg. And you really feel that nice stretch in the hamstring. So the first time might feel a bit tight. We'll do it two more. Bending both of your legs, lengthening the torso, grabbing your left ankle with your left hand, first pulling the forehead in, bracing yourself with your right fingertips, of course, then straighten the left leg. Reach the crown of the head down and the forehead and reach your right knee up first, then reach that right leg to straight. One more, bending both legs. Ooh, that left hamstring sure is tighter than the right. Lengthening the torso, straightening the left leg first, then reaching the right knee up high, then straightening your right leg. Inhale, flat back. Step back through your vinyasa. Finding that nice, deep, upward-facing dog. Exhale, downward-facing dog. Now my legs are feeling quite equal. Both stretched out. Breathing here in your down dog. So we warmed up our bodies even more. Now I'm going to introduce to you a flow. We'll flow it together two times. Take a deep inhalation through your nose. Sigh it out. Bring your feet together. And inhale, reach your right leg up and back. First, open the hip, just like we did in our standing splits. The more you open the hip, the deeper the stretch is going to be. Try to square your shoulders, though. 
and bend your right knee and reach your right knee up as high as you can. You'll feel that stretch in your left calf, maybe even in the left hamstring. Inhale. Exhale, right knee all the way over towards your left elbow. Now extend your right leg out towards the left. Slide it forward so it's at least in line with your left wrist. Now, staying on the ball of your left foot, just to find a bit of length in the right side of your leg, you're going to lower your right hip down, open your shoulders like up dog. Now, I'm sure you want to go here, fall in triangle, spin your left heel down, lift the hips up a bit, pushing through the right hand, inhale, stretch your left arm up and over the ear. Thinking about reaching the legs away from one another, lifting your heart up and over your right shoulder blade. And then exhale, take your left hand down. You're going to take your right knee to your chest and spin all the way to the pinky toe edge of your left foot. Flip your dog over so now your right ball of the foot is behind you. Lift your heart up high. Inhale. And exhale. Don't think too much about it. Just step your right foot forward. I know it's not that easy, but you got it. Left knee comes down. Inhale. Rise up. Anjane. Familiar pose. Exhale. Ardha Hanuman. So Push through your right heel to straighten the right leg, then bring your fingers down and fold. Inhale, crescent pose. Right foot down as you lift the left knee up. Inhale, rising up. As you exhale, lift your navel into the spine. Press the left heel back and lift your inner left thigh up. Inhale, gaze up as your palms touch. Exhale, standing splits on your right leg. Lift your left leg up. You might even bend it like I taught you in the round before. Grab your right ankle with your right hand. Pull the forehead in, then straighten your left leg. Inhale to a flat back. Fingertips underneath your shoulders. Lower your left leg so your hips are squared. Flex your left foot and then begin to open your left shoulder, bringing your left hand off the ground opening your left arm up towards the sky and turning your left toes out towards the left for Ardha Chandrasana. If you need a block here for balance, this is a good place to grab your block, maybe the low height, medium or tall, placing your right hand on it. To challenge yourself a little bit more, you're going to point your left toes, bend your left knee, reach your left hand back behind you and grab your left ankle. From here, push your left shin back behind you to open your left shoulder up. This is where the block is really going to help with that balance. Now try not to slingshot. Inhale, stretch your left leg back and your left arm back up. Bend into your right knee and step back into a warrior two. Windmilling the arms out wide. 